Hello everyone, my name is Tempest Mask 1000 and today I'm going to be running for you what is going to be the final Mega Man games of Game Over Cancer. Uh, I'm very honored to be representing the Blue Bomber once more and starting off, this is going to be Mega Man Extreme 2 for the Game Boy Color, released in 2001, same year as Mega Man X6. This game came out first, but it's also referenced in X6 and therefore it's considered canon, but also because of its setting. Uh, this game takes place between X3 and X4. And also, the Japanese name of this title is Rockman X2 Solar Racer. So, the extreme is just something that we Americans decided to add. Uh, so, joining me on co-commentary is a good friend of mine. Please introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Tempest Troll. And Tempest Troll and I are going to show you what will hopefully be a good time. So, yeah. First, before we start the run, I'd like to show off my options. So, up here we have... Um, the select button feature, which I'm going to set to changing X's weapon because the category is any percent X mission. So we're mostly going to see X. There will be a bit of zero, actually, but, um, uh, you know, I'm basically going to uh, need the select button right here to um, have X's weapons change on the fly. Uh, soon enough, though, I'm also going to switch to the character swap. Uh, but for now, we'll have it on as weapons. Uh, auto charge is turned off and rapid fire is turned on. I'll explain why in a bit, but for now, let's just get this thing going. Also, hi, sound test. So, I'm ready to start whenever the timer is. Uh, with that in mind, let's get started in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Alright, we're off to the races here with uh, Mega Man Extreme 2, and uh, how it works is pretty interesting. So. The Japanese version, I'm choosing to run that because it's actually faster by about a minute. Um, so all those cutscenes there, I can't skip them. I just have to scroll through them and the Japanese characters are faster by that much. Uh, here we have the intro stage. Now I'm just going to have to try and get to this claw enemy, shoot it as close as I can, and there we go. So the reason I wanted to do that was because it sends me right to this cutscene right here. So the closer I am to that gate, the smoother the uh, transition, if you will. Uh, here we're talking to Zero. Apparently, four ma eight, sorry, eight Mavericks have been revived from X's 1 to 3, and uh, they're just realizing this now. Um, so right here we have spikes. Believe it or not, these in X's path actually do normal damage, but don't you worry. The tradition of instant kill spikes still continues there. That was a fast wall climb. It's my vertical speed allowing me to chain the wall climbs as fast as I did and such. But here we have our first intro boss, the Mechanoloid Skullhead. I affectionately refer to him as Mega Skeletor, so check. If you could please get your yes going, I would very much appreciate that. Yeah. Curses. Oh! Ooh. Steve, when you, when you turn on your webcam in Discord? <laughs> oh, that's right. Um, I'll get to you in that in a moment. <laughs> Not uh, for worries. Yeah. yeah, unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> more importantly, though, um, yeah, so let's try that again. So Skullhead is a bit of a, uh, a bit of an issue with um, damage. He's otherwise that easy, so I swear I don't usually die to him, but uh, yeah, that can be a bit of a problem sometimes, because depending on how much health I have, um, that platform he just spawned has a better chance of hitting me. So, sorry, did you say turn on my video feed? Okay, one moment. Alright, there we go. And... Pardon the cursor? Uh, that... Nobody saw that. <laughs> More importantly, though, we are being introduced to uh, Gareth. So, Gareth here is a bit of a knight-like reploid who claims to be what's called a soul eraser. Therefore, that's why this game gets its name Soul Eraser, but he's a bit shady and X and Zero are having none of that. Also, you might have noticed Iris. She's our navigator. She's uh, from... Uh, X4, and uh, this game is the prequel to that, so she's a little bit different. Her color scheme in this portrait is actually wrong. There's one in the Zero Mission path that shows the actual colors, but uh, with that in mind, we are about to start our main game's premise, where um, we are taking on four Mavericks instead of the usual eight, and we're starting things off with Neon Tiger. Shout out to Guns N' Roses and their song My Michelle for inspiring his stage theme. I'm a bit of a classic rock fan myself, so 
This song is digging, but uh, yeah, Temp, if you could please explain how we're gonna handle parts in this game. Okay, so uh, in this game we have uh, these, I guess, parts currency called DNA souls, and uh, what they are is basically anytime you pick up a, a health refill or an ammo refill, uh, there's a chance that it has a small diamond like white center on the inside, and that means that it counts as uh, part of this ammo currency as well. So they sort of combine them into one pickup. Um, yeah. Not all pickups are, are DNA souls, but some are. Exactly. And need the, the parts that we unlock throughout the game, uh, it depends on how many uh, DNA souls we collect. Not total, but currently in our inventory. Ooh. So, ooh, unfortunate. That was Basically, a little... that's okay. We get more time to explain. Hmm. Basically, we want to unlock both the Buster Plus 1 and Buster Plus 2 upgrades. And what that means is for the Buster Plus 2, we need uh, 1,000 uh, DNA souls in our inventory. Not total, but but currently, which means we can't... Uh, if we wanted to pick up the Buster 1 early, we could, but it would uh, require us to collect extra souls to get Buster Plus 2 later. So we collect them only after we've defeated all the Mavericks. Pretty much. And the thing about the Mavericks is that uh, they have very big DNA soul drops. So every time I beat a Maverick, whenever you see the uh, level complete uh, victory spiel, um, they award me a big DNA soul piece. So Yeah, it's 200, isn't it? Exactly. And for yeah, the and, normal uh, drops... Yeah, drops 200 as well. Yeah, so Skullhead. we get 1,000 for free. Pretty much, but we just want to be certain of that. Uh, otherwise... Mm -hmm the DNA soul drops go as follows. Uh, if it's a single cluster, um, that's four points. If it's a double cluster, that's eight points. And triples are 16. Uh, there's also reportedly a stage drop that apparently counts as a DNA soul, but uh, gives you 20 points. I have not found that yet, but that comes from my friend Focus Sight, who is an active runner of this game. Uh, Shoutouts to Focus, um, who did an awesome job at Rogue Rush um, with Bakuman's co-commentator for Mega Man X. But here we have Neon Tiger, um, and he's as you, what you'd expect from X3. He jumps from wall to wall. Uh, pattern that I'm hoping for is what we are indeed getting. I want him to use his Ray Splasher tail attack more than the lunging attack because it's a little bit safer to damage him this way, uh, is the long story short. And with that, he is dead. Flickering tiger, more like. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So that is another 200 DNA souls, good to our collection. Uh, with that, we are going to move on to the next Maverick of the stage, X3's Bolt Catfish. Now, there's a reason that in any percent I choose Neon Tiger first, and that is because this game splits weaknesses for some reason. So Capcom, when developing this game, um, as you might have noticed, I have four Mavericks here, and there are four different Mavericks if I played Zero's campaign right now. Uh, essentially, Neon Tiger's weakness is Tunnel Rhino, and that's only something Zero can uh, fight. There is a special circumstance for uh, getting that weapon in a playthrough here, but it's not speedrun viable as far as I know. Uh, all you need to do is beat the game, save the file of, uh, ex of, um, sorry, <laughs> Zero Mission, save the file afterward, load it up, and you start a brand new X mission with all the DNA souls you collected in that file, and then the four extra weapons. Which is a shame that it's not speedrun viable, because in Zero's mission, the final boss for him is weak to Neon Tiger's weapon for Zero Rising. And it's, it's very bizarre, but hey, we roll with it. Uh, so, coming up, we have the one and only armor upgrade that we're going to be getting from our good old dead dad, Dr. Light. Um, and these are the foot parts. So, the armor game is actually the second armor from X2. Uh, the difference between it and the actual X2 game is that some of the features remain the same, such as the air dash, which we're getting now, but I'm just going to demonstrate it quickly. We have our up dash from X3, so that's a nice little feat, and this makes X all the more movement viable, just as zero, because if you were to play as zero, he automatically... Oh, why did I just do that? <laughs> Um, he automatically has an air dash. Hold on a moment as I perform the title skip. Ooh, that unfortunately did not work out. So Good how- title skip. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, uh, 
practice earlier, I got that perfectly fine. What I was supposed to do was avoid that wave that pushes X, and I can't fight it back if it gets me, as you saw there. Luckily, I didn't touch the spikes, but, uh, Temp, what's the difference between waves from here on out? Well, yeah, so the first ones, they just push you back, and it's dangerous because there's spikes and enemies. Um, but from here on out, uh, the waves in this stage are going to be flashing yellow, and they will insta-kill you. It's basically just a, a whole screen, like, a partial screen fill of spikes. Uh, but what we can do is get, take damage off of that enemy right there, and the iframes will get us through it. I feel like my iframes could have worn off the instant that I hesitated, though. It's, it's, I haven't really kept proper count of, uh, how, how long X stays invincible, but yeah. Uh, we're moving on to Volt Catfish, and, uh, Temp, explain how this fight's gonna play out, if you would please. Right, so the previous boss gave us, uh, his weapon, Ray Claw, which happens to be, um, uh, Volt Catfish's weakness. Uh, Buster won't stun him, but, uh, Ray Claw actually will, so what we do is he just hops over us, we charge up Ray Claw, smack him with it, and no matter what he does, he can attack or he can jump, doesn't matter. He just, uh... He just sort of sits there. <laughs> and he, he tried doesn't even to really get a chance to do damage. He tried to use the discharge there, but nope, Rayclaw is quite simply effective. Yeah, it interrupts anything that he tries. It's, yeah. it's pretty pathetic. <laughs> Which is funny because that's kind of how you can describe X3 bosses in a nutshell, but uh, if you were to take on Volt Catfish without his weakness, he'd probably be the toughest one. I've had a bit of trouble in that regard when I first experimented with what path to take before following some other speedrunner examples. Um, with that in mind, we are being introduced to our other Soul Eraser, Burkana, here, who is one of the rarest occasions of the X franchise, probably the only known villainous or major villainous to this series. Discounting a command mission, probably, but, um... With that in mind, uh, Burkana is Garrett's creator, and, as if I remember correctly, and is actually the real mastermind behind this plot. She used to be a Reploid R&D scientist who, I suppose, dabbled in the science of DNA studies because apparently for Reploids, their DNA acts as their soul. It's kind of funny, and, well, that's why Iris dubbed the, uh, parts pick up currency DNA souls in the first place. But, um, yeah. It basically all functions within the plot, more or less. So that life up right there is the last one that I'm going to be getting through this entire category. Um, reason being, while there are uh, life ups in every stage, Neon Tiger and Launch Octopus is the most on the way to, to put it simply. Uh, yeah, the other ones just aren't convenient to get. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's, too much time. it's possible to get them. It's just, yeah, what, what Temp said. Um, but yeah, just uh, trying to let myself get carried over by the blowfish here, and then I shoot them dead, and now we're moving on to everyone's favorite sea dragon. Um, let's see if he becomes a bit of a jerk for me today. Um, hopefully not. I just need to shoot either his face or his tail before he decides to give up. There we oh, go. Oh, good pattern. Absolutely. Fun uh, fact about this uh, stage is that, I don't know if you mentioned, but the music's wrong. Yeah. Um, I, actually, I didn't, well, I didn't know this because I wasn't <laughs> aware that these were existing enemies until uh, <laughs> very recently. <laughs> I didn't play the X Games, but the, the um, Flame Mammoth and Launch Octopus had their music swapped around in the JP version of the game. This was corrected in International. Absolutely. So I'll get into that more, but first, don't blink. Watch this strat. This is going to be try to be quick. Okay, so we use Rayclaw to uh, uh, cut off his tentacles, and that makes him stun for a little bit. Then we switch to Tri uh, Thunder, which we got from Volt Catfish, which is his weakness. We blitz down his health really fast. Um, now, once we cut off the tentacles, it does make uh, Launch Octopus jump around, and it's super annoying. But uh, it still lets the brief period we do get to stun him with uh, still gives us enough time to whittle down his health really, really quickly. And that's useful because if we don't kill him quickly, he'll start to use like a leeching attack, and it sucks. Yeah, pretty much. But Mel Melkoros, I've played Mega Man X. I have not played Mega Man X three. Yeah. Shout out to uh, my friend GeekFreak17 in the chat. He's an old YouTube friend of mine. Uh, he's he's a really nice guy, and I'm glad that uh, he's been enjoying his time here so far. And also, thank you for your donation, my dude. I very much appreciate that. So, here we have our final Maverick of the playthrough, uh, Flame Mammoth. So, quick note, there will be no boss rushes. That would only exist in extreme mode, which is the true ending the game and the full experience, if you will. Um, here we're just going to, uh, 
have these four Maverick stages and then three Fortress stages to then take on Burkana, and then the game is over. Uh, otherwise, it's basically uh, stuff you might be familiar with. But the neat part about Extreme 2 that I prefer it over Extreme 1 is it tries to do a little more original things with its level design. Sure, you might notice in stages like Flame Mammoth, uh, by the way, I'm just going to quickly health, uh, health farm a bit because I want to not risk this uh, with Mammoth. But, um, essentially, okay, maybe not. Um, <laughs> game doesn't want... You can see those those pickups had the little diamond inside of them. Those were DNA assault pickups. Yeah, unfortunately, they were just weapon ammo, so I'll move unfortunately, on. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, but yeah, those were indeed DNA assaults. Um, where was I going at? Well, as Temp mentioned earlier, Flame Mammoth and Launch Octopus's stage theme in the Japanese version are swapped, but yeah, international version fixes that, but it's still pretty, a little bit faster. To, to run the Japanese version. All right, so we're at Flame Mammoth. Uh, what's the strat here, Temp? Right, so Flame Mammoth does this sort of jump and land thing, kind of like Gutsman from Mega Man 1. Uh, and just like Gutsman, it's super annoying, and he will stun us if we are in contact with the wall or the floor. Ooh! He can also do that. What we want to do is sort of hug the wall so that he'll uh, jump and land right below us, but yeah. we don't want to be on the wall when he lands or else he'll stun us. Uh, and then we blitz his health down with uh, the weapon we just got. Or we were supposed to, anyway. Marine, Marine tornado. tornado. Marine Typhoon? Tornado, it should be really called Typhoon, but <laughs> in, either, in either case, I have a problem with that name. Eh, fair enough. But hey, but it is what it is, because... Game. <laughs> I mean, sure. The thing is that you'd be... Uh, some of you might notice that the weapons from these familiar Mavericks act a little bit differently, which is funny, because if you've played the Game Boy Classic Mega Man games... They usually did a good job of replicating that. Um, but here it's a little different. It's not that worse of a thing, though, because had we gotten the arm parts and I charged up Ray Claw from Neon Tiger, uh, that would have just given me his Ray Splasher as the charged weapon. So, hey, no sweat that we died there. Uh, I'll just keep going. Um, I'm sure things will play out, because now we at least have two lives. Oh, but this, uh, ooh, yeah, this could be a bit tricky. Um, all right, there we go. So, just to save time, I'm I'm gonna take an intentional death to Flame Mammoth because my health is really low, and you might have noticed that I do not have any sub tanks. The reason being, the sub tank of X's playthrough is in Mammoth's stage, but be um, while I do have the leg parts needed to break the blocks. Again, it's the same problem with his life up and that of um, Bull Catfish. It's just out of the way, and I want to try to complete this run as fast as I can. And I've usually had my better chances, but here we are back at Flame Mammoth. He's he's apparently wow, he's trying to be really shooting fire. <laughs> Man, this is the worst pattern. Wow. I feel so bad. Marathon luck. Oh, boy. Dude, dude stop shooting fire. Oh, my God. I'm going to try and go kamikaze a bit. Um... Uh, wait, he, okay, he can also shoot oil slicks. There we go. Uh, there we go. <laughs> so what we want him to do is jump over to us and sort of stay against the wall, but him shooting fire like that is really uncommon. <laughs> to have him do it that many times in a row, that's really unfortunate. One thing I should mention about these bosses is that they actually have an extra move in extreme mode that we won't see here, but, um, yeah. Damage tables can also change in extreme mode. Those fireballs that you saw me dodge in that uh, one section from the stage, they actually do enough damage to instant kill me in extreme mode, and that's probably the only stage variant that um, really comes to mind for this game in extreme mode for whatever reason. But uh, other than that, you know, this is honestly a really good game because for a Game Boy Color title with... Um, a handheld that is less power than the Super Nintendo. Ooh, I don't want that. Oh, but I bought it anyway. <laughs> Curse is Japanese. No, but... Um, my point being, uh, this game really does a great job emulating the X Adventure so well. So, okay, I didn't want that Buster speed up shot part there, but I guess we'll take it anyway. Uh, it's at this point that we now have access to Burkana's Fortress, and the abandoned Reploid R&D factory. I'm assuming this was her workplace. And, um... Well, Dangerous workplace. I mean, yeah, because, you know, she was look a scientist. At, look at all these OSHA violations. <laughs> Dude, my, my lab never looked like this when I was in school. Oh, boy. 
And there's even the ride armors too, am I right? Like, dude, clunky mecha suits, dangerous work hazard for the uh, peers, am I right? But, uh, yeah. Now, nah. um, regardless, I should actually, uh, quickly explain the story. So, as I said, this is between X3 and X4. Uh, Zero and X are dispatched to Lagoo's Island, an area where mysterious, um, reports have been spotted. Meanwhile, Repoids across the world have been suffering from this, uh, called Erasure, where their bodies just suddenly stop moving. It's almost as if they become hollow. So X and Zero are obviously dispatched with Iris as their navigator, who's taking time off from the Repla Force to get a bit of, I guess, intern experience. And then, uh, yeah, they're just basically putting a stop to these plants. So here we have Velgarder. You might remember him from X1. Uh, this time, I'm going to be the chain, the literal soul eraser here, with uh, X's buster now turned into a chainsaw. And there we go. The dog is dead. Now you are the soul eraser. Indeed, now I am the soul eraser. That's actually pretty funny. Now that I have the buster speed up part, this does make my shots a bit faster. So it was a bit unintended, but this actually kind of works. This could potentially make up for a bit of time. Well, I'm gonna do one more safety right here and get the barrier extender. So I should probably explain how, um, oh yeah, I also got the weapons half because coming up here, we have a pretty difficult stage, but uh, Temp, if you could explain the upcoming skip I'm gonna attempt. Right, we're gonna do a thing called elevator skip, which is a skip that does not skip an elevator. Uh, it skips a horizontal moving platform. So these electric uh, currents down here are like spikes, they're insta-kill. And what we want to do is basically take damage from bats, run across the spikes, take damage from bats, run across Ooh. the spikes, etc. Until we hit that wall. You, he was so close to getting that. I hesitated um, a bit. We basically just want to uh, want to damage boost all the way through that, and they're the bats are placed just far enough apart that you can reach them, but it's pretty tricky. Yeah, so I'll try it one more time because honestly, having zero lives in this... Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It's not fair. the worst thing in the world. Yeah, it's not, but the thing is that uh, this stage houses one of the hardest bosses of the game. Anyone who's played this game will probably complain about one particular um, foe, and that is Isaz and Suilo, the Sphinx tank. And... Good God, this is screen con- it's- it's screen crunch incarnate. I used to have- ooh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Oh! Okay, well that oh, just save. happened! Good save! <laughs> that was awesome. Wow, thank you, Bats. But yeah, Isaz and Sawilo is probably the worst boss you'll encounter in this game. I like that it's an original yeah. mechanoloid of sorts, but it's- it's just annoying due to the fact that you- it's like a, it's, it's, it's pressuring. It really is. You'll see yeah, what I mean soon enough. You'll, you'll see. Um, uh, just... Here we have to make heavy use of the uh, leg parts, which uh, let us uh, do a vertical dash as well as an air dash. This is really the, the stage and the next stage are really where it becomes the most useful. Yeah, I, I kind of miss those cycles though. I'm just going to wait a bit. I'll, I'll try to, yeah, there we go. All right, we're good. So. Something I forgot to mention about Zero, his combat is different to X's in the sense that he focuses on his saber. So think Mega Man X4 Zero because there is no side buster action like in X5 and X6, uh, which is a bit unfortunate, but hey, it happens because Zero's run is arguably a bit more dangerous. Being up close and personal means a bit more damage boosting, but you know. I actually, funny enough, my PB for any percent zero mission is actually a lot faster than X mission any percent. So, um, yeah, that's that's definitely something. But uh, as you can see here, we have some rising fire. Don't worry, this doesn't instant kill me as you see here. Uh, this actually appears in Tunnel Rhino's stage in Zero's campaign, but uh, yeah, that takes care of that. So, Esau's and Suelo, Temp, I'm getting ready for this one. What should, what is the uh, game plan? Well, so this boss, let's be honest, this boss is terrible. Um, so this boss occupies a ton of horizontal space with its body and a ton of vertical space with its projectiles. The goal is basically to destroy the upper face, which shoots out uh, the projectiles that cover the most vertical space. Uh, which lets you uh, more easily deal with the lower face. You can also push back the boss. Um, right there, he started off with uh, zero final, which is sort of upgraded that zero gets. That was t uh, that was. And that'll push back the boss a little bit and do some extra damage. He's starting off with zero, so you can keep X at uh, peak health for as long as possible. 
That second zero final was a catastrophe. The knockback must have had me face the other direction, which also explains the one fatal flaw with this. The moment zero final hits something, it basically stops the animation and, well, that floating platform kind of has its own hitbox. It's all good though. Um, I should be able to recover from that. Uh, Isaz and Sawilo is a very rough boss for a reason. I won't be able to do more zero finals, so I'll just have to uh, improvise a bit. There is a proper speedrun strat that is uh, preferable to finish this boss faster, but it's much more dangerous. And quite frankly, I do not know how to pull it off, so uh, instead I just do what I can. Uh, as you can see here, Zero Z Saber um, can push him back. I just need to... There we go. There we are. It's really, really tough, especially after you destroy the first head when the mortars start coming down. Um, they occupy vertical and horizontal space on a boss that already covers most of the screen and whose body is an, an entire active box. It's really brutal, but uh, good fight. Uh, thank goodness it wasn't it is, the worst. It is pretty typical to lose a life on that boss from what I've seen. Mm-hmm. Pretty so much only so. losing one is, is pretty good. Well, luckily we are at the final stage of the run, so hopefully we won't have too much issue from here on out, but this will be the final section that um, I'll be able to swap as characters, and then coming right up is a cutscene, so if we could have some donations being read right now, that would be spectacular. If we don't have any, that's perfectly fine otherwise, but uh, yeah. So uh, I should probably explain how the um, the parts quickly work as well, because when I equip them, uh, what happens is the characters only have a maximum amount of slots. Uh, for Zero, it's three slots, X has four, but when X has his full armor suit, it gets reduced in half to two. Um, so X any percent mission gives a bit more lenience here, and in 100% there is a special bonus that I would be getting, but I do not currently run that category, so it is what it is. Actually, allow me to explain why it was X mission that I submitted solely for this marathon. It's because at the time, that's what I had a run for. Um, I hadn't had my zero mission with my current PB uploaded yet, so um, yeah, there wasn't much I could do about that, so I'm glad that this run still got accepted. And uh, yeah, what you just saw right there with that wave, that's the one reason we need the uh, foot parts. Apparently there's a way to get up to that platform, but it's a bit harder and honestly not worth it. But for the remainder of the run, I'm just going to switch the select button back to changing X's weapons, just for ease of Marine Tornado getting rid of these bats. And to the right is a fake wall that would have the 100% bonus of both the Hadouken and the Shoryuken. Alright, so we're getting close to Burkana. Time is on the final hit. Um, Alright, no weapons here. Temp. So, Burkana is not a very hard fight on her own. She's pretty easy to hit, but what makes her tricky is that she throws up these two projectiles, the A spheres and the B spheres. Uh, when you get hit by one of them, your respective buttons are locked out. So you get hit by an A sphere and you can't jump, you get hit by a B sphere and you can't attack. And after she hits you with one or both of those, she will uh, attempt to attack you with uh, some other thing. She'll turn either the, the walls or the floor into spikes and, you know, shoot out projectiles and move along the ground, or she'll put in a platform that she then uh, tries to occupy the same space as, like this. Luckily, the effects don't seem to cross over, meaning that if I get hit by a sphere, it'll automatically change to beast, uh, to that scenario. Unfortunately, I am probably gonna die because there's not much I can do about that. Yeah, uh... it's really brutal. She locks out your jump and then throws out these projectiles that, uh, send waves across the floor and you can't jump over them. It's really cheap. Um, so you basically have to either avoid or uh, destroy the A and B projectiles. Pretty much, yeah. To answer your question, Stryzer, about the previous room, yes, there was a wave of electricity. It did not flash yellow, but it was electric. Yeah, it, that also it, appears in Gareth's stage as well. You might have noticed that some things physically differ between levels if I played between X or Zero. And Zero's final boss is Gareth. Um... So, arguably, Gareth is much harder than Burkana, um, for reasons I won't show off today, but it looks like we're almost there. Just gotta, uh, come on, and time! Very nice. 
Whoo, mama, that was that was a uh, that was a pretty okay run. It's not it wasn't the best, but you know, it'll do. I'm perfectly content with that, and uh, yeah. 